Let's go, Casey Jones, but we'll all be dead. Dimensions, nothing but good intentions. I've been learning my lessons, no type of fake conversations. I'm busy counting my blessings for real. Yeah, and all these haters obsessing, they steady stressing every single time my name gets mentioned. But I just keep on progressing, cause my shit's popping, stay present. I'm relevant and I'm destined, cause I'm just preaching the message. Of love. Bye, here's my guy. I see right through your shit You and I are so different My bed, I, I, I Helps me realize I am you and you are I And I and I are so divine I'ma do, yeah, I'ma do my thing I'ma do, yeah, I'ma do my thing I'ma do, yeah, I'ma do my thing And all these haters, they be pressing as they watch me do my thing And I say, watch me, watch me, I'ma do my thing, yeah Watch me, watch me, I'ma do my thing, yeah, yeah Watch me, watch me, ooh, watch me, watch me, ooh Watch me, watch me, ooh, ooh, ooh yeah. In my third eye, my guidance, how I know I'm in alignment I breathe it in and I find it, I turn my shit into diamonds My trailer parked to an island, used to sell food, now I buy it I was a peasant, switch perspectives, now I'm royal highness And I don't fight it, I allow it, I attract it, I receive it Let love fill me up timeless, I got gratitude and kindness Big things on the horizon, and I worked way too hard to ever let some haters make me silent <laughs> Here's my guidance I see right through your shit You and I are so different My bed, I, I, I Helps me realize I am you and you are I And I and I are so divine I'ma do, yeah, I'ma do my thing I'ma do, yeah, I'ma do my thing I'ma do, yeah, I'ma do my thing And all these haters, they be pressing as they watch me do my thing And I say, watch me, watch me, I'ma do my thing, yeah Watch me, watch me, I'ma do my thing, yeah, yeah Watch me, watch me, ooh, watch me, watch me, ooh Watch me, watch me, ooh, ooh My bed, I, 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 helps me realize I am you and you are I And I am I are so divine I'ma do, yeah, I'ma do my thing, yeah I'ma do, yeah, I'ma do my thing, yeah Good. I'm a female crane oh, operator. Already started. Men stare at me. Video. We're not going to do that quite yet. We're actually going to do this thing that we do. What's up, Ajot? You're not even in here yet. Let me put Ajot in here. So, like, welcome to the Ajot hey. show. Hey, yes. Hey, yes. Let me do my thing. I like that song. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it, no. I'm pretty sure that chick is an industry plant, but I don't care because she's just so cute. That was great. You know, I like it. Um, I need to go and get me a whole stack of different shorts clips like that so I can just stack them up and, and use them interchangeably. Yeah, shuffle them. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, that was literally, I literally just, uh, literally. like, screen captured that right before I went live one night. <laughs> it was just a, there it is. Okay, let's do it. But you know how I roll. So, do you want to go through and tell your vasty fanship uh, hi? How I don't far know about vasty fanship, but yeah, let's do this. All right, so we got Chuck in Tennessee. What's up, Chuck? What's up, Chuck? What's happening? What's going on? We got John Denicola. John Denicola, evening. Who's smoking that? Smoking mo smoking monitor, smoking auditor, <laughs> <laughs> the best monitor. <laughs> The best right. monitor ever. 
evening, evening, John. Elmer Skaggs come in. What's up, bud? Good to see you, Brandon Mitchell. Who else we got? You know that guy? I had to catch my breath. Uh, <laughs> I had to catch my breath. <laughs> got okay. Dove and Stephanie up in the house. Girls. Oh, all right. Good to see you, Stephanie Jinx. Appreciate you coming through. And we have caught up with chat, which is, you know, makes that so much easier. Oh, don't forget Brandon um, Mitchell. Oh, Brandon Mitchell, what's up, bud? Good to see ya. Um, okay, so I have a con accumulated a little bit of a uh, Hell Divers footage that my wife. This is my wife playing the game over here, right? And it's it's a couple of particularly hairy missions she went through. And that's playing on the top screen up at the top. In the middle, we have Acorn Stash most recent upload of memes. And uh, we had so much fun with the, with them last week. I figured we'd repeat yeah. that and see how it worked again. Um, and then as a sort of wrap up at the other end of all this, I have, um, uh, oh yeah, media zealots, villains too stupid to be evil, right? They're, they're supposedly arch villains, but at the same time, their plan is completely absurd when you actually look at it from a reality based standpoint. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, you've seen, um, like battlefield earth. No, 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 oh, wow. that's probably the greatest bad movie ever made. Or the worst great movie ever made. I'm always confused on that one. I, I got a buddy of mine who's absolutely positive. It's one or the other. But I kind of agree with him on that. Because the plot is absolute absurdity. Lar NCM. L -A -R. Lar, Lar for president. Lar for president. Lar for this president. <laughs> thought it was going to be me and Joe Cool. <laughs> <laughs> right. John Travolta saying a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Travolta played in that. And he he over he overacted his role so wonderfully that he made it an absurdity movie. It's something you watch just to see John Travolta lose his mind slowly. Interesting. I will definitely have to check that out. You should check it out. It's basically uh it's basically like the story of Conan kinda. Mm-hmm. Homie discovers some ancient weapons that he can use to fight the cyclos and he strikes at the heart of their empire and destroys the planet basically by burning up the atmosphere on their planet with radiation. It's it's the the book is is weirder even. It's even weirder. But that movie I mean, just the books are always better, weirder. No, I didn't say better now. Oh. <laughs> I'll hold your horses. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I never said better. I said weirder. There's even like, for instance, in the book, when he comes across the mini golf course, right mm -hmm. in the book, he literally sees this literally. place. I, well, I mean, yeah, it's literature. What the fuck do you want me to say? <laughs> Nothing. He I just like the way you say it. Literally as a God's graveyard of fallen uh, Titans, right? He thinks at some point these creatures were walking around the world and knocking over, and it's the reason the buildings were knocked over and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. right, right, right. Anyway, it's nuts. This is nuts. Maybe you should check it out. And what was it called again? Uh, Battlefield Earth. Okay. It's terrible, by the way. It's a really bad movie. Talk about bad movies real quick before you get this going. So, Toe made me watch, it's called Warriors. <laughs> okay, it was like nineteen eighty six, nineteen eighty four. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I was four years Hold old. On. What is it that dude says? Warrior, <laughs> <laughs> warrior. It's, it's basically. <laughs> it's basically John Wick, but in gang form. You're not wrong. That's actually a fairly accurate interpretation of that film. You're you're not wrong. He's just that tough. That's what yeah. it comes down to. I mean, one of my uh, more favoritist ones. Somehow I think I got on the wrong one. It's a bad movie. Watch it, Dove said. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. It sounds horrible. 
one is it? This one. What's banned? Still Young Rocks. Where are we at? That's the no, year no, I graduated that's high school. Last week. <laughs> I was five years old. <laughs> it can't be one from last week. What? This was uploaded two days ago. Okay. I thought I'd made an error for a oh. moment there. Study finds surprising number of Americans think chocolate milk comes from brown cows. See what I mean? The study found 48% of respondents weren't sure where chocolate milk came from. 7% thought chocolate milk only comes from brown cows. Said it. That's that adds up to about 16.4 million people. <laughs> more than the population of Ohio. And if that wasn't bad enough, the Washington Post linked this study to past studies that consistently show many Americans have no idea where their food comes from. For example, a study in the 1990s store. found that nearly 20% of people did not know hamburgers are made from beef. And you just know 20%? that these surveys Absurd. was done on college campuses and liberal cities. It just gets worse by the day. But all we can do is laugh while the world burns. <laughs> all right. favorite spice blend has a violent history. And yes, they're talking about pumpkin spice. Dun, dun, Here's dun. An article for all you vegans out there. Which I'm sure there is very few, if any, vegans that watch my videos. 10% of all vegetarian hot dogs contain meat. <laughs> From CNN. Go figure. Your Franks may not be frank with you if you're a vegetarian. According <laughs> to a study from Clear Labs, a. No, that <laughs> one was funny. That was yeah, funny. No, I mean, but the absurdity of getting sausage that's vegan. How much tofu can you stuff in a sock? Is my question. I don't understand why people. Thank you for coming in, Lar. Get some rest. A food analytics startup: ten percent of vegetarian hot dog products contain meat. Now that's bad for all you vegans, but here's something that's bad for all of us. It also found human DNA in oh. two percent of its hot dog samples. My God. Well, wait. I mean. Wait. Wait, hold on. What was that song that back in the day? I'm a wiener, you're a wiener. <laughs> Got Appreciate it, Izzy. Joe D. <laughs> Welcome in, Izzy. Hey, honey. Pour it in now. See, right now, it tells me that there are 54 people watching. Keep that in mind when you're looking at your analytics later. Right, there's 50 in mine and four in yours, yes. Right. You see what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's Welcome the Bad Beaky Show. show. Welcome know. to the Bad Beaky Show, where absolutely nothing of import happens. <laughs> <laughs> so enough for vegan fake meat. What are they doing to the regular hot dogs? We all know where this is leading to. It's I mean, people! I already have the green one. That's why it's quote-unquote good for the planet some of the people out there will get this oh that was it's the joke i just made <laughs> they actually made the product by this name sub toe carbon footprint toe of homegrown food five times greater than those grown conventionally this is the stupidity of this generation you see articles like this about people that's wanting to grow food in their backyard or whatever Welcome in, but you can say a single thing. You hear about them wanting everybody to register their chickens? No. All right. So there's this specific bird flu going around that apparently certain types of poultry are especially susceptible to. And so someone proposed that, well, if we just registered all the chickens, we wouldn't have this problem because we could weed out the ones that we know are susceptible to it and just, you know, use good, healthy stock. Yeah, no. Um, you have any idea how many chickens there are in American backyards? Oh, there's a lot. I, our neighbor has chickens in their backyard. Right? Ask Hawaii. Hawaii has feral chickens. Like you can get you can get murked by a game bird in Hawaii. They they attack people regular. Stephanie says, Yes, sir, I'm not registering my fluffy butts. 
Okie dokie pokey, gotcha. <laughs> Rolling on now. About growing any other plants, flowers, or bushes up, Mitch? that Welcome don't back, produce bud. food. So what is it that they really hate? We all know. Huh. As a scientist detained at U.S. border until he unlocked his phone. See? He should have said he was an illegal. <laughs> I knew where that was going. They just give him a new one and sent him on through. Immigrant. <laughs> then he got a new phone, free health care, a debit card with money on it every month, a free ride to wherever he wanted in the country, and a whole lot more. <laughs> I'm a female crane operator. Men stare at me constantly. With what? Binoculars? That was good. That was good. <laughs> Honey, buddy, I'm going to have to give you a big old X to doubt on that one. I mean, you're cute, but not that cute. <laughs> not like superhuman eyeballs cute. That's absurd. What's up, Big Chief? Big Chief! Big Chief! 95% of electric cars are still on the road. The other 5% made it all the way home. That's absolutely true. As we've witnessed this winter, new Irish government wants to pass a law that could see people jailed for possession of memes. Cartoon. All right. So let me get this straight. Because I had a funny thought. And I wrote it down and I gave it to you. Now we're both felons. <laughs> yeah. Are these weapons grade memes? Like, how do I get a hold of these memes? These memes sound awesome. It's like good drugs or something. Like, the more dangerous they are, the better they are, right? Right. 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 How do you define hate without a definition of hate? Let me out of you. Let me out of me or any content that could be deemed hateful by bureaucrats. The bill includes no definition of hate and is wide open to abuse by corrupt politicians. In other words, you couldn't question or say anything negative about the government or any individual bureaucrat or politician, nor any of the policies or bills that they want to pass, or anything else about the mainstream narrative. Or just anything in general that they don't like. I'd say most everybody by now knows about this cartoon. Or what do they call it? Anime. Anime. It basically means a Japanese cartoon. But I had to throw this one in here. Fun fact. Whatever new Dragon Ball content is released, cartel activity drops significantly for about two days. That's just So let me get this straight. A new Dragon Ball Z cartoon drops, and the cartels stayed home to watch it. And the ones that had to work on their criminal empire that day and just couldn't get out of it, they immediately stayed home and watched it the next day. Hmm. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Maybe the social programming shit's working. Maybe. It's hilarious in my book because it means that this younger generation, this cartoon is more important to them than any job that they're working. Even the criminals. <laughs> I have I'm a confession. Smiley virus. <laughs> Smiley virus? Welcome in, my bud. Um, when he, You remember Heroes? Yeah. All right. When Heroes was coming out, uh, they, they were having troubles settling on a particular day that they were going to be uh, premiering on. And so at the time I was working for this dude about 10 miles from the house I was living in at that time. Mm -hmm. And when, whenever, and I told him this when it started coming out, cause I was looking forward to that show like weeks ahead of time. And, um, I watched every episode as it came out until the writers guild uh, strike ended it. And it's one of the best hyped shows in history when it comes down to it. I would take time off in the middle of the day, like 
no joke. I would just be like, okay, it's fucking four thirty. I need to get home so I can take a shower, watch Heroes, and I'll come back and finish this. Right. right okay. But that was okay because they really didn't have a choice. <laughs> I was gonna watch Heroes. I didn't have no way to record it. See, I'd had a way to record it for like the first two weeks, and then my DVR messed up, and I was just like, uh, uh-uh, nope, mm, 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 mm. I'm way more invested in this show than I am in this job. Right. How poor people spend the little money they have is always the topic of discussion. Let's talk about how rich people spend the money poor people create. 100%. The worst thing is, is a lot of the country has been taught that the rich is people like small business owners and whatever. Instead of Hello, people Nabin. like Welcome Bill man. Gates, George Soros, and Jeff Bozos. Jeff Bozo? Whatever his name is. You guys know who I'm talking about. And on a side note, I read the other day that he sold off a record-breaking $8.5 billion worth of Amazon stock. There was also several other billionaires who sold off large amounts of stock in their companies as well. When Italian bureaucrats get paid higher salaries, they are less likely to take bribes, which makes them more likely to be unalived by the mafia. That's another example of when politicians try to justify their crimes. Right. But if you or I were trying well, to use this corrupt, exact same excuse, they throw us in prison for the rest of our lives. I'll commit However short I got that may be. Times. Dead by our government official up, accounts Dead releasing Dead. information in meme formats now. Because they know people trust memes more than they do the government and the media okay, now. So I have a question. That's just a fact. And a good reason. What up? So I'm just sitting here and I'm looking and I'm like, you know, I keep looking at the title and I'm like, damn, oh, you know what I mean? Like, finally, the Caucasian age out show, right? And I'm thinking, right. man, it took me like a year, right? Of working hard, kissing that butt. No, I'm just kidding. But working hard, right? <laughs> to get into to having a show with you. Like, how like many I'm, times I, no, I asked you, I said, do you own. have a pitch? Give me a pitch. And you'd be like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, okay, well, I can't work with I don't know. I don't know what to tell you about I don't know. Right. right? But see, you usually, like, you pick the I don't know. And then I just, that that part's your job. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I contact you when I have a couple of. When sure. I come across things, and we've done them. You know what I mean. But mm-hmm. I mean, I don't mind. I mean, if you need me to, in never mind. Whatever. The friendly reach around. What are we going for here? I, I, <laughs> you it. All up. No, I was just saying. So, um, next time, now I'm working on the to be able to highlight comments. Yeah. Oh wait, you want access to my back end? <laughs> wow. I mean, I don't just, know. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't pull my skirt up on the first date, honey. Oh, this it's been multiple dates, but no. <laughs> so back to what I started with, I'm like, it took can me I, a year to get. Can, can I give you a confession? No. As many people as I have access to the back end of their stream yard, no one has access to. I, the back no, end I know that. I know that. And I and you have said a couple times, like. One minute you'll be like, man, I should really do it so you could help me do the comments and I do the background. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But then every time it comes to it, you're like, mm-mm, that bitch is Well, crazy. um, do you have a pay version of a uh, StreamYard? I do. Okay. Send me the freaking link. I'll run the back end. I have no problem doing some of that. No, and, no, and no. We can, See, we can I can this somebody who controls my back end, right? Uh, so to get another back end, but they suck at like, it. Obviously, I mean, if they no, didn't they, suck so bad, you wouldn't be sitting here doing this. What are you talking about? Nobody but oh, you, yeah. because it's your streamyard can can do all that. But if you have a paid version of streamyard, you can do the same thing I'm doing. I can't you highlight can. your comments in streamyard. If you are the streamyard owner and you send me admin access, then you yes, get. But I can only have there. one admin. With oh. I had the low grade paid version, not the high grade. Yeah, me too. If I had the high grade. Okay, so see, you have nobody in your backyard. So once oh. a week, you could let Binky in the backyard. Mm. Is all I'm saying. You can take it and give mm. it. And take it and give it. You're making me feel all insecure. <laughs> in me. It's like you're 
I hear what you're saying, but you're going to have to let my trolls sleep on it for a little while. (laughs) (laughs) And it ain't nothing personal, but that's a hard one to let go. Midlife bro logic's in the house. He's over there on X. Good to see you, bud. I have no idea what's going on in X. I can't even find my live stream over there. I've never (laughs) given a clue. I just send it over there and go, I hope you do okay. (laughs) I don't know, no. Nor Cal cop watch Navin, but I mean, I I've watched him for quite some time. Did I see what I happened? Miss. Yes, I did. What I miss? What I miss? Uh, oh, Navin was asking about North Cal cop watch. Okay, cool. What up? <laughs> <laughs> He's cool too, by the way. For it too. Late millennials and younger generations learn about Cad <laughs> Generation X. How can they eat gluten? Chelsea's like, I'm confused. Why are they offended by everything? Why is their music so good? How can they distinguish between a man and a woman? Because as far as speaking of a generation of people as a whole, Gen X and the early millennials was the last generation with any common sense and critical thinking ability. Actually, uh, I heard Flow State say something the other day that I thought was a, was a pretty good idea. I challenge everyone right now to share this link to a random Facebook a group with no explanation for why or, or what it's there for. Don't tell them nothing. Just just drop the link over there like it's porn and run away. <laughs> I, I want to see the weirdest group of people in chat I've ever encountered. I'm pretty sure that would accomplish it. <laughs> Did you see what Smiley Virus said? That's uh, uh, see, right now I could have it. Anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll I, know you, I know you like my back end action, but apparently that was the topic of the night last night. Exactly how much back end action I get. I, I'm just, I'm blushing, blushing Sasquatch noises. <laughs> Lawless, um, yee yee. A tree yee-yee. fell on my fence. What up, bud? Making the best of Wallace it while World I TV. To repair. That is perfect. And what makes it better is dog is in quotation marks. Have you guys seen this? Meet the New York Police Department. You remember this? Yes. So crime is rampant. People are getting knocked out on the street. Uh, there's, there's just... There, there are groups of citi- armed citizens and gangs just wandering around New York with their own form of law. And the New York Police Department has a, a really bad, really, really bad dance team. Dance team. I mean, really? Maybe it is time we defund some of the police. It reminds me of a time right. not too long ago during a certain ongoing created event. When the hospitals were supposed to be overflowing, there was video after video on social media and even the news of nurses dancing in empty hallways. If your parents made 80,000 when you were born in 1990, you'd have to make $246,382 in 2024 just to have the same life. This is true, and that's just a sad fact. And if you want to go many times more so, this dropped back to the 1970s and 1980s. Have you seen the uh, deviation between median home prices and uh, average earnings? Yeah. New device. <laughs> new like device. That. Nobody will ever suspect me of being a government plant. It's just a new device. New device. <laughs> Hello there. Right. Once you understand that the solutions aren't created to solve the problems, but the problems are created to implement the solutions, then you will understand just how evil the people creating all these problems really are. You watched The Hunger Games and sided with the resistance. You watched Divergent and sided with the resistance. When it's fiction, you understand. Yet you refuse to see it when it's the reality you're living in. Very sadly, this is true for a large portion of us. See, I can explain everything, bro. Logic, listen. Me and 
bad binky over here decided we were going to cross the streams now now and i know what you, i know what you're saying you're never supposed to cross the streams but once she got into a contortion position capable of spraying it out far enough i decided what the hell she can't stop me <laughs> generation but by the vast majority of the comments that you guys leave here on the channel you guys are awake and already know these things, which is why you're watching this video right now. Science proves kids are bad for the earth. More um, I've often said this. There are two sides to this equation. There are those people out there who believe that humankind is destroying the earth, and these people will breed themselves out in two generations. Every <laughs> is inheriting the earth the rest of us pff, i don't know how many kids you got running around i don't know how many i have either morality suggests we stop having them we need to stop pretending kids don't have environmental and ethical consequences there's more stupidity of this generation and I'm saying However, I appreciate you, brother. This is a very That's bad 110 time people in to bring any child into this world. And He's it's very really sad day and hour. 150 Democrats vote against a bill to deport illegals caught driving while drunk. Notice that it doesn't say that they didn't have a license because that's one of the first things they're given. Bureaucrats unable to define woman. Go find a Gen Xer. They'll be able to explain it to you. How to sell your body parts legally. <laughs> My ways to make money and help others too. This is how the media is telling people how to make more money to be able to pay their bills. Just sell your body parts. You got some extras, don't you? Google Update reveals AI will start reading all of your private messages. Google has just unveiled a... You do realize AI is going to go slowly and say fucking with my private messages, right? Right, right. And there's some twisted shit in there. They don't, they don't, they shouldn't do that to that poor newly born being. It's just wrong. A game changing AI upgrade for Android, but it has a darker side. Google's AI will start to read and analyze your private messages going back forever. I mentioned on a previous episode about how some of the high ups point blank stated how they well, were going to use AI Queen to monitor everyone's ATL messages on in. social Fat media Daddy 44. Good to see and you. your text messages on your phone to make sure it wasn't misinformation. And they also stated that if you texted someone a private message on your phone and it wasn't in line with the narrative, that it would be quote unquote corrected they always tell the pretty sure i said it right the first time what um okay so i've noticed some weird stuff in my autocorrect features on my phone that happens sometimes when i make a comment on youtube mm -hmm. the comment won't actually go through at the time that i send it it'll take it like 10 minutes to actually show up over there in their comments yes yes i've noticed that but here's my question. Why in the world would they hold good job? I really like the video. The set is great. I don't know. I can't tell you. <laughs> I mean, Welcome in, Jamie Rooney. Welcome in, bud. Good to see you. If I can catch up to your thing, I will click see? it and it will come up my I screen. I'm going to be doing all of that for you right now. Don't make me come Pop over there. Popping them comments. Popping them comments. People, what they're going to do before they do it. But most people still refuse to believe it. Here's another people of Yellowstone. Tourist dips fingers in Yellowstone hot spring with predictable results. All right. Is that you? What? Are you the one dipping your fingers in the hot spring where it says warning water is hot? Uh, yeah, because I would want to know how hot. <laughs> his fingers in a boiling pool at Yellowstone National Park for attention. Despite warnings from a companion, burning himself in the process. Like I've said in past videos, the people of Yellowstone 
Must be the same people on the videos All about right, the yeah. people of Walmart. I have hey, now. based meats down here. <laughs> yes. That is exactly what should here. happen to all of these facilities. Milford. <laughs> As Penny was saying, I have plant-based meat down here. <laughs> we all float down. That's also a myth, by the way. Regional Medical Center warns it may deny care to those using unwelcome words about race. Or All right, so you show up at an emergency room and you, you've got a... Uh, a major medical emergency and you're screaming all kinds of obscenities because it hurts and you're freaking out. You don't know what's going to happen and you're scared. You're, you're just nutting the fuck up. And they're like, no, no, you're using foul language. We're not going to treat that man. Yeah. I, that's crazy. That's batshit crazy, man. And, and, and people could say, oh, well, you know, it wouldn't happen that way, but really, really, Gender. I also showed a similar news article back in one of the past episodes of this series where a hospital said very similar things about people being brought into the ER. Not only are you going to see a lot more of this, but you'll see them expand this to cover of many other conservative views. Mississippi cop is arrested for shoplifting in uniform. After being cut. Oh, I this? saw that one. Yes. Yeah. See, that's when that gang mentality <laughs> comes out loud. Dumbass. She showed up at a freaking foot locker in the middle of the afternoon, walked in and stole a pair of shoes that just happened to be out on display and happened to be her size. She just picked them up, put them in a box, said hi to the chick behind the counter, and walked out. And they called the cops. Really, Stephanie? What happened? What happened? Called on you in the hospital for telling the doctor he was a bitch. Um, <clears throat> the worst I ever did in a hospital. Um, my wife had a kidney stone, and it was it was uh, one of the worst ones I've ever seen. Far worse than the ones I've ever had, and it hospitalized her for three days. But when I took her up there, we didn't know she had a kidney stone. She was just screaming at me, and so. We go in, we get her brought in after like five hours of waiting in the freaking waiting room. And then she's put in one of the beds in like the corner over there. And that was the last person we saw for another four hours. Right. And then four right. hours, I said, when, I, when we sat her down in the bed, I set my alarm for four hours. And if we were still there after four hours, I was going to pitch a fit and go to jail. That was my intentions. I was going to go to jail, but she was going to get seen. And we sat there and folks waved at me and they talked to me and, you know, can I get somebody over? Okay. They'll be along in a minute. They'll be there in a minute. And when that alarm went off, I lost my fucking mind. I stood up, walked in there and realized that the entire freaking crew that worked the shift up there was sitting around the desk talking about some kid's birthday party. Hmm. And I fruited the fuck up on them. I was, set my i was walking with a cane at the time and i set my cane on the desk and shoved everything off the desk onto the floor and everyone sitting there went dead silent and looked at me i said my wife has been sitting in the corner dying for the past 44 hours and i am done waiting <clears throat> and the the only person there in a white coat said i'm sorry sir i'll get right to her immediately and walked around the corner and went to her and i walked out the back doors right there and smoked a cigarette right went back in and everything was functioning like a normal hospital at that point. And they started cycling people in and out of there pretty quick. And I don't, I, I don't know why they didn't call the cops on me. They should have. Right. Stealing a $140 pair of shoes from what Dick's Sporting Goods. Robin Connor, 33, was in uniform in, Good to see you. and driving her police cruiser when she was caught Dirty stealing. rotten imbecile 69. We have the uh, participation trophy winner of the me night. on what's offensive today. It's hard to keep up. Everything is offensive. How can you talk if you haven't got a brain? Some people without brains do an awful lot of talking. That is my favorite line from The Wizard of Oz. Is it? It, it, it? it is. I mean, there's a whole bunch of really good ones, but that line says more about the world in one breath than virtually anything else in that. Well, 
Maybe the wizard at the end. Mm -hmm. Professor Marvelous or whatever. I love you, hippie. <laughs> well, I love was you, hippie. Dropped from the devil's my den, babies. Farming, fishing, and making money is <laughs> not <laughs> All right. If you want to live. We, we have a contender for the throne. <laughs> a new participation. <laughs> mean, if Congratulations. Oh my goodness. All these agenda has been going full <laughs> speed ahead for decades and decades. There is no climate crisis. And increasing CO2 concentrations will benefit the world. Dr. John F. Clauser, joint recipient of the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics. Let that sink in. I'm just gonna lay that right there. <laughs> you could make the argument <laughs> that his Nobel Prize was in uh physics and not weather. <laughs> but <laughs> I think we might want to follow the science on this one. Fuck you, Carrie. <laughs> not having a brain you never a Nobel you Prize off, winner. Off. By you do it. I said not a uh, smiley virus. Yeah. Not having a brain never stopped Roseanne Barr from talking. <laughs> or Bill Maher for that matter. <laughs> Two, you would learn in third or fourth grade that plants need CO2. And the more CO2 they have, the better they grow and the more oxygen they produce. A helicopter running on fossil fuel spraying a chemical made from fossil fuels onto a wind turbine made with fossil fuels during an ice storm is awesome. And they literally burn through hundreds of gallons of fuel trying to de-ice <laughs> one of these wind turbines. As destructive and inefficient as these things are, you would have thought that somebody would have thought about this and built in heaters into the blades. Even Starlink home satellite dishes have a built-in heater that automatically activates when there is snow detected on the dish. I have no words. The <laughs> <laughs> well, you realize that for that, for that warning to have been created, it had to have happened at least a few times. Right. In public. <laughs> Does it really surprise you guys? It doesn't me. At all. January 30th, 2024. Electric buses are coming to a school near you. February 20th, 2024. Main school districts pulling electric buses off roads due to safety issues. Some of the issues seen. In All right. So if you can imagine the battery that you need to run your little RC car, uh -huh. and then you take that battery and you make it big enough to run a full size car. And then you take those batteries and you put them together big enough to run an entire freaking bus full of kids. When that thing starts burning, It'll never stop. We're talking a brand new Chernobyl. There will be an elephant's foot in, under every single one of these buses. Yeah. Include power steering failures, leaky windshields, missing rivets, and emergency doors that don't work properly. This is about as bad as those new electric city buses. It was going up a small hill, and apparently something overheated, and the whole system shut down and lost power. After it lost power, it don't have any brakes. And since they were on a small hill, it starts rolling backwards and crashes into a bunch of cars. It sent at least go. one person to the hospital that was in one of the vehicles it hit. Want to stop the riots? Mobilize the septic tank <laughs> truck. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> mm. He's so right there. Everybody be like, fuck this. I'm going home to take a shower right now. Ew. Right. I got my my mouth was open, bruh. Ew. Ew. Pressure cannon on them and hose them the down. Full of shit, <laughs> can't be good. Spew entertainment <laughs> either way. Yes, I agree with this. 
There's actually some farmers that has done exactly this when it interfered with them being able to actually run their farm. Or in some instances, where the so-called protesters were trespassing on the farmer's property. This is Staff Sergeant McGuire with the U.S. Army Recruiting. I'd like to discuss the many opportunities the U.S. Army has for you. You can text or call this number with any questions you have. I look forward to hearing from you. I hate this country. If you join the U.S. Army, you will get to leave this country often. <laughs> That does pretty much suck. Bro, homie's on point, son. Like, he's getting them numbers up today. <laughs> you can get right the hell out of here. We'll even pay for the trip. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You can meet very, very lovely foreign people and kill them. <laughs> yeah. Sum it up. On Exciting new places and bomb them. <laughs> the European Union flag stands for... Disastrous open borders policy. Bureaucrats and banksters running everything. A great future ahead. Uh. Records show that Christia Freeland built thousands for limousines and taxis in Toronto, despite claims she relied on a bicycle and public transport. <sighs> These politicians would never do such a thing. Keanu Reeves does all the time. But none of these parasites will. Woke authoritarian agenda. Trudeau liberals propose life sentences for online hate speech. They also didn't define what hate speech was in these proposed bills. Which means they could construe it to mean anything that they want anytime that they use it. Here's another people of Yellowstone. Yellowstone tourist ignores rules. Capturing and placing elk calf in their car. You can't make this stuff up, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, stay away from elk. They're fucking dangerous. Okay? That's crazy. I could literally it's, start a new series it's, just called the people of Yellowstone. They're almost the same thing as the people of Walmart videos that you see all over YouTube now. This is the number one recommended baby formula. 42% corn syrup, 15% soy, 11% safflower oil. A baby's diet sets the tone for its entire life. <laughs> this is absolutely criminal. I agree with this 100%. People have no idea what they're feeding their babies. And to take Smoking it a step further, hold on, hold on. Most of the stuff that we've got to address this. I mean, because you're one of those fucking <laughs> Disney this is why this happened. You're so fucking nice. Even the animals come up and just hang out with you. I wouldn't be surprised if right fucking now you're not walking around living a goddamn musical. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know that dude's name? It's fucking hilarious. It makes that joke even funnier. <laughs> what we're eating from the stores is just as bad. So in the middle of the Civil War, someone was like, you know what this country needs? A delicious steak sauce. <laughs> this is true. The Civil War didn't end until 1865. Censored photos of the Sesame Street Muppets have been leaked online. I thought this one was kind of funny. But hey, it got you guys to click on the video. So if you're still watching this far, please consider hitting that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and share the video to help support the channel. Absolutely. Make tax collectors birds again. <laughs> now this is one that I can get behind. I've ever told you my problem with yeah. taxes. What? I mean, beyond it just basically being just bald faced threat. I mean, the theft. Uh, the, the issue I have with uh, Laura Lot Magnetism, welcome in, girl. Um, John J. Johnson, the 15th. The thug shake. I can't do the thug shake. I don't know how, but I, I would be willing to learn it and making bad binky do it. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, the tax shake. Um, the issue the issue I have with taxes is is the government's like give me money and I'm like okay how much and they're like no 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 you figure that out but don't get you wrong because if you do we'll come for you with guns and I'm like well I don't I don't want to get it wrong but if you can just tell me how much I owe you they'll be like no 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 you figure that out you you just send us some money and if you send us too much we'll send you some back how about that what if I don't send you enough we'll come for you with guns I but I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. I'll send you more than I owe you if you'll just tell me how much to fucking send so that they don't show up with guns. That's all I want. All you want. You know, the very powerful and the very stupid have one thing in common. They don't alter their views to fit the facts. They alter the facts to fit their views. Doctor Who, 1977. It might have been fiction in 1977, but it's mainstream in 2024. Climate change, my ass. Anybody trying to outlaw climate wants to unalive us. Absolutely facts. See, we don't have a population problem. We have a population density problem. The cities have become too populated. You can almost not get enough goods into a city to mitigate the lack of transportation does that make sense mm -hmm. the the system that's in place right now was set up in the late 40s early 50s and and it was perfectly fine for the late 40s early 50s level of population density but the inner cities has become heavily populated since then even more so now and so the amount of goods that need to be brought into a city has increased almost exponentially, but the ability to do so has not. And people see that disparity and think, oh, we have a population problem. Go to Texas. There are places <laughs> in Texas where man has never set foot. I mean, granted, it's a desert wasteland and probably nobody wants to go over there, but that's not the point. The point is <laughs> it's a transit issue, not a space problem. And that's an absolute fact. Hey, Flow State, I got a challenge for you. Hey. I want you to share this uh, live stream to a random freaking group anywhere on youtube anywhere in the, in, in the in the ether sphere i don't i don't care facebook twitter wherever the hell you want to it's up to you bud do your worst hey california how's the housing situation going california homeless found living in furnished caves 20 no, feet that, below street level i gotta tell you that was a uh that was a really good idea you had. I, I really dig that concept because it puts it puts the link in random freaking places that no one could possibly predict. Mm -hmm. Right? I All was right. sharing. What's the, what's the freaking Facebook group I'm a part of that I accidentally clicked and haven't figured out how to leave yet? I, I don't uh, know. <laughs> diviners, enchanters, encanters. It's it's actually a I bunch of freaking wizards these people consider themselves magicians and they sit around and talk about the magic that they do and you are a part of this group <laughs> well it wasn't <laughs> always about magic it used to be about fishing like <laughs> a long time ago go from fishing to wizard, the magic i mean i don't know i don't know i don't know What's up, Russell? Good to see you. He buddy. does look like a wizard. He could pass. Okay, I look all right, but that, that might yes. have done it. And no, Radagast didn't fuss when I stole his beard. <laughs> yeah, and believe it or not, I don't know what you did, but if you're talking, you're muted. <laughs> The technical issues are part of the show. You're back. You're back. From what I heard, Am they I got even. Yeah, it just went all robot as hell, didn't it? <laughs> it went I bad. Hello. Hello. Should you not hear yourself for a second there? No, I could hear my echo. Now it's good. Oh, cool. From their cave, too. Gone in 24 seconds. 
Our car was towed 24 seconds before we paid to park. The attendant told us, that happens. We owed $160. Yeah, and this is called predatory towing. We don't need more cameras pointed at citizens. We need cameras pointed at politicians and unelected bureaucrats. <laughs> at least two transgender... Nope. I'm not even going to read it. <laughs> I'm just, nah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. There's a hate crime over there, and I'm not having no part of it. <laughs> mm -mm. I'm a straight white guy. I have no right to even. <laughs> it's not, not, -uh. no. <laughs> no way, no, sir. No, how. Not doing it. Mm -mm. When someone hugs me, and I know they felt my holster. <laughs> oh, look, electric car fuel. <laughs> Good God, man. If you trust the government, you obviously had a bad history teacher. <laughs> They haven't taught real history in the school system for a long time. Forever. Forever. I fly all over this planet to fight climate change for you. I'm a paid chill and full of shit. <laughs> some of you who know a little research may know, probably found out who her mom was and how she was raised just for such a position. Let's just say it was no accident that it just happens that she was the one chosen to give the speech at the UN Oops. and to become the face of this climate agenda. It's just like AOC. I mean, AOC would lit like actually went to a casting call. They, they, they brought people in to see who would test best for the position and then cast her for freaking what senator congresswoman jesus monkeys what in the world's wrong with this world is that what's wrong with this world yep the pentagon's woke schools for seventy thousand kids exposed gender expression for four-year-olds parent free <laughs> and racial bias listens that leave students sobbing and how lloyd austin Covered it up. It's a wonder stuff like this even makes news headlines anymore. Since there's so much of it happening all across the country, this specific one just happens to be talking about kids of currently serving military families. Protesters. We're heading to the rural area next and stealing from all of them. You do realize that these people argue over which lead dispenser is best to put in their truck. Right? <laughs> like, I got two neighbors. Both of them are weirdos. Complete weirdos. They're both armed to the teeth. They are. <laughs> they got me licked on every caliber, bro. And and I'm, it's, I'm in a small town. So it's a thing. It's funny to me. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> Want to be green? Shut off your air conditioning, turn off your phone, and go plant next year's dinner. And that's a straight up fact. Being an adult is realizing $1,000 is very little money to have, but a lot to owe. Right? Apocalypse. Oh, my. Hold on. Yes. Yeah, yes. No, we need to go back over that for a minute. When I owe a thousand dollars, it is a crushing deficit. It is a debt that I am going to pay as soon as I possibly can. Like we're eating bologna sandwiches, y'all get over it. Listen. But when you win a thousand, it's like I win a grand. That shit's gone before the next morning, man. I like I, I vaguely remember spending it. <laughs> Having to go to work. Somehow we ended up here. <laughs> and in between the apocalypse and having to go to work <laughs> both happened <laughs> it's the worst possible future <laughs> when your electric powered car runs out of electricity 
Y'all call a gas-powered tow truck to come take you to the charging station, which gets its electricity from a power plant that most likely is either fueled by gas or coal. Normies. Wow, I thought you were a conspiracy theorist, but it turns out you were right all along. <laughs> right? I, I Look, listen, no, for dead serious, I'm dead serious. I had this jar around for a while. Uh, we, we It was like a, a, one of those five-gallon water buskets, and uh, all my kids would put change in it. And I told them, I was like, when we get it so full that, that we can't lift it, we're going to dump some of the coins out. And we'll take them all down there and, 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 and get them counted up. And then we'll go to Chuck E. Cheese or something. Right. I mean, they were little kids when we started this. Mm -hmm. So when my daughter turned like 17, they finally determined that it had been long enough and asked me if I could lift it. And it turned out at the time I couldn't, uh, not easily anyway. It was, <laughs> well, so I had to empty some out and we took it and cashed everything in. And these teenagers decided they wanted to go to Chuck E. Cheese. Like I oh, promised. Heck yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> it, it was kind of great. It was kind of great. Uh, I, I got to watch my daughter do some really weird autistic Sasquatch shit. Yeah, you know those uh those timer games where you got to hit the button at the right time to stop the little spoo diddy. Right. You know? yeah. I sat there and watched her just print tickets. Yeah. She yeah. just kept going. Free turn, print tickets. Free turn, print tickets. And she just started giggling. And I can see when it's gonna stop. Right. And they came over and was like, "Can you, can you move to another game?" <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, dude. She's only. Like, I mean, my kids did that one time, and and my middle son, he was just he's he ran it out of tickets. I mean, they had right. tickets in it. <laughs> that's 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 where we were headed. She had a pile of tickets around her feet, was giggling maniacally, yeah, yeah. giving a very good Sasquatch giggle impression. I was I was also giggling too because it was hilarious. She she yeah. she acquired a crowd like everybody was standing around and just watching the tickets come out. She was like free, free ticket, <laughs> ticket, 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 free spin ticket, ticket, free spin cool. ticket. <laughs> just rolling them out, bro. Never wanted to be right. That is true. These apples are not real. Don't try to eat them. I can't believe I have to write this sign. <laughs> you gotta expect this these days. How many Otherwise, somebody try correct. to sue your store. Right. The budget breakdown of a 25-year-old who makes $100,000 a year and is excellent with money. Total monthly spending. $2,775. And if you look at the how they got this broke down, it's a complete joke. And if the numbers wasn't bad enough, they got a quarter of it going to donations. Hmm. My boss told me if I wanted a raise, I needed to send him a detailed list of reasons why I think I deserve one. So I just dropped this off on his desk. I am poor. <laughs> New Democratic Party bill Accurate. would prescribe jail terms I mean, for speaking he's right. well of fossil fuels. An NDP bill is seeking to criminalize the promotion of fossil fuels and prescribe jail time even for Canadians who say scientifically true things, such as how burning natural gas is cleaner than burning coal. Educational like malpractice. Do it. Do. When one of my nieces had her birthday there, the mouse sucked. So I got up there and got the birthday party dancing and so on. That's cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> the mouse does I mean, suck, that's yeah. what it takes. I mean, yeah, most of the time. <laughs> For the one we went to. <laughs> <laughs> the guy in the Chuck E. Cheese costume that was running around the place was obviously some bum that was really still liquored up and just kind of stumbling around in the place, knocking people's pizzas off and stuff. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> you say so. But them kids was, was clowning on him so hard. He's like, he's a sewer rat. Check him out. <laughs> he's from New York City. You can tell. <laughs> Have you seen that movie? Yeah, Five Night Freddy or, or Freddy Five yeah. Night. Oh my Five, God. Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. Yes. I've seen it. I've seen what it. What the hell? It made me, yeah. I was like, right. oh, 
Chuck E. Cheese. Have you ever played any of the games? No. There's your problem. No, All but right, I'm, I'm just not... saying the story itself was like crazy. Like I just pictured, you know what I'm saying? Like Chuck E. Cheese and his friends. Like it was crazy. That's... But it actually has more. I can't remember the name of that. There, there used to be a kids' game thing in the southeast down here. And I can't remember what the name of it was, but it predated Chuck E. Cheese and it predated Five Nights at Freddy's. And they had uh, a pretty good run. They they almost franchised, and then something happened somebody was robbing money everything got embezzled or some crap and it went mm -hmm. belly up and so for a few years before the Chuck E. cheese thing really kicked off and what's the other one dave and busters not that one the other one anyway before the whole kids play scene really kicked off back in the 80s this had already taken place and died and so when the Chuck E. cheese thing came around that's around the same time as the Five Nights at Freddy's things popped up. Because, and I firmly believe this, there were already, before Chuck E. Cheese, abandoned what appeared to be Chuck E. Cheese locations all around the place. And they were creepy. Mm -hmm. Old animatronics inside and stuff of characters you've never heard of. Mm -hmm. Wild. Yeah. All English students allegedly taught a love for reading and writing is white supremacy. Homeless California man stole private plane, took it on a joyride to prove point on lax airport security. Well, I guess that was one way to get his point across. They should hire him and put him in charge of head of security. You get the reference to Trevor, is that you? What? That's, that's it. Says Trevor. Is that you? That's a Grand Theft Auto reference. One of the characters in Grand Theft Auto. You, when you take over control of his life, he's always involved in some kind of mad shenanigans, like Florida Man. Is that the like naked on the beach or right? You'll you'll spawn into him, and he'll be he he will have just stolen a car. Is that the white guy <laughs> or the black guy? Yeah, it's it's the white method. Yeah. Okay. Because I know there's two main three. characters, and they're one of each, but I can't remember the other one's name. There's three. There's an Italian, a black guy, and a white guy. Oh. This kind of sounds like a bad joke, but I'm not going <laughs> to. A student persuaded by his friend to get his legs amputated for a $1.3 million insurance scam wound up only getting $7,200 that he now has to return. A student in Taiwan had his legs amputated to claim $1.3 million in insurance payouts. Oh, the I watched that. The Foundation Bureau said the man soaked his feet for That's 10 hours in dry ice to get frostbite. Yep. But the plan backfired when medical staff in, thought his injury seemed suspicious. I don't have any words to even add to this. Generate a photo of a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Scandinavian woman. Sure, here's a photo of a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Scandinavian. Have you heard uh, Captain Curmudgeon's Black George Washington shtick yet? Yes. Oh my God, I laugh maniacally every time I hear it. It's kind of the same. I have the same reaction to that that people have to my Alex Jones voice. Yeah. It's, you just don't expect it. I told you if I was him, that sounds so cool that I'd just start talking like Black George Washington all the time, everywhere, all the time. <laughs> and woman. That woman is not even a natural blonde, let alone ethnically Scandinavian. You gave me an Indian woman with dyed hair. I can't generate images of that. Try asking me to generate images of something else. Have you guys heard about all the AI image generators? How they were obviously programmed to never show an image of a white person, no matter what they were prompted for? From what I've read, this happened on several different ones. What? And of course, the companies are now claiming that they're fixing the problem. I'm sure everyone here knows how all the elites are pushing for the slaves to have to eat bugs. Well, if you don't want to eat bugs, now they have a new choice. Scientists propose eating more python. You want that snake trouser, don't you? 
I'll give you some prime Georgia black snake, let me tell you. <laughs> These big reptiles may be sustainable meat source if farming can be scaled up. I'll leave this up for a few seconds here. You can pause the video if you'd like to read the bottom. Yeah, it talks about how nutritious Python is. Yee -yee. As a kid, I used to watch The Wizard of Oz and wonder how someone could talk if they didn't have a brain. Then I got social media. <laughs> Breaking. Gamers worldwide left confused after trying Google's new chess app. And Do you get it? No. Since since the AI wouldn't show white people, it also won't show white pieces. So oh, both uh, sides of the chessboard is <laughs> black. <laughs> 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 it's getting just about this bad. A woman was charged $1,000 for a Subway sandwich. She said she couldn't get a refund for seven weeks and struggled to afford groceries. Oh, my God. Well, this was a bit of an overcharge. I guarantee you she typed in 700 instead of like seven bucks for the tip. It's just a honest mistake that she made and so it couldn't be refunded immediately but it might not be too long until we get to that point within the decade there will be no more snow on a kilimanjaro al gore 2005 2024 google employee working on gemini <laughs> AI generated image, which just makes it all that much better. That kind of looks like the guy who gave me a tattoo of Tigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. New Jersey legalized. People are now capable of standing in line with an ID. There's something seriously wrong with a society that thinks these people are backwards and don't represent the average person but thinks these people know what's best for everyone on earth. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Accurate. I mean, I, so far I haven't seen any errors. That's what I'm doing. I'm, 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 I'm um, what are they, what do they call it? I'm fact checking his memes. Right. I'm, I'm fact right. checking. We're the fact check department for acorn stash. <laughs> now, you know why Trudeau is for made. According to a cost analysis report from the Canadian Medical Association, the implementation of assisted unaliving will save the Canadian healthcare system between 34.7 and 136.8 million dollars per year. So make sure you get depressed. You go in and you get your shot today, ladies and gentlemen, today. You can save the government upwards of a hundred million dollars just by ending your life because it's not worth living to begin with. That's, that's what I hear when I hear them talking about that. Hmm. I don't get it. Hmm. Hmm. Painting memes on the sides of buildings. That's funny. Yeah, never mind the fact that this is just one more little link in their depopulation agenda, especially concerning the Western nations. Indoor balconies in an apartment building. What the or fuck? A balcony without sun or fresh air is just a people shelf. A people shelf. Maybe if we tell people the brain is an app, they'll start using it. <laughs> No faith that that was. Cop <laughs> open fires on handcuffed suspect after an acorn landed on vehicle. That's what? no relation to this. <sighs> <Don't Beavis. matter. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Touch it, Beavis. You know, for those who might not have never seen this from Ann Landers. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but it's actually pretty good. I'll leave it up on the screen for a few seconds. You can pause the video if you want to take the time to read it. Let's see if I can get it up big enough to see it. 
Oh, yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> Y'all won't be able to see it for a minute, but Dear Anne, I am an English teacher, and my students are reading George Orwell's 1984. I am having a difficult time explaining communism, socialism, and fascism without giving a time-consuming history lesson. I recall you printed a humorous explanation of these concepts using cows. Will you please print it again? I am sure it will kickstart a lively class discussion. Her response is, it is an oldie but a goldie, but here it is. Socialism, you have two cows, give one cow to your neighbor. Communism, you have two cows, give both cows to the government, and they may give you some milk. Fascism, you have two cows, you give all of the milk to the government, the government sells it. Nazism, you have two cows, the government shoots you and takes both cows. Anarchism, you have two cows, keep both cows, shoot the government agent and steal another cow. <laughs> 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 Capitalism, you have two cows and sell one to buy a bull. In <laughs> 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 fact, check on that one. Mm -hmm. True. Kansas City Mayor accuses governor of racial dog whistle for calling Super Bowl parade shooters thugs. So this guy who shot people at the Super Bowl or after it was called a thug and mainstream media became upset by that. And I'm thinking if you're doing a drive by, <laughs> the analogy is a little too apt, maybe. Right. That's right, people. It's now considered racist to call criminals who are trying to unalive people thugs. Oh, my gosh. What is do you know where the term thug is derived? No. But do tell. Okay. So, in India, there was this death cult that developed who called themselves the Thugis. Thugis would basically go on serial killing sprees. They would they would murder as many people as possible. And, and this wasn't just one or two people. There, there were a couple of thousand people that spontaneously, over the course of a couple of years, decided they were all the this part of this death cult and they just massacred massive numbers of people in india they would sneak into houses murder folks and anyway anyway their propensity for murder being a death cult is equated to the mob's propensity for murder you know in managing their affairs and so the concept of the thugi was transferred into the mobster mentality as a thug Times claims the more you know that the administrative state, that is, governance by unelected bureaucrats, protects our country and enhances democracy. The so called federal government just needs to be dissolved and let the states rule themselves again. Illegals are robbing us, assaulting us, and bringing into our cities. Build the wall. I'm sending your tax dollars to pay for the pensions of Ukrainian bureaucrats, Jack. <laughs> what did you think they were spraying out of those planes? Vitamins? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just looked up and saw Denzel Washington's most serious face. <laughs> I was like, well, he's got a point. Like, I don't know what the hell's coming out of those things. <laughs> right? Plenty of people that would believe that. Dear environmentalist, a climate crisis is when it's negative 40 outside and negative 55 with wind chill. Canadian oil and gas is the solution to these climate crises. Bill C-11 will allow Canada's internet to be censored by unelected bureaucrats. Washington man faces jail for disrupting Rainbow Serpent after building bridge over creek on his property. What? Rainbow Serpent? <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. Are you defending a mythical creature? Because I might be able to get on board with that. 
Mr. Maddox was charged under the unamended 1972 law for building a creek crossing on his property, which the prosecution claimed had disrupted Wagul, a rainbow serpent central to mythology for Noongar people, as he removed a large amount of silt from the creek. If found guilty, he faces up to nine months behind bars and a fine for $20,000. Since this is a fake creature that only exists in someone's mind, he is literally being charged with a thought crime. More than 30 <laughs> Harvard students up. skipped lunch in solidarity with brown protesters. <laughs> plate of the Year award goes to this license plate as Alberta <laughs> approved. I'm not reading that out loud. According to the Global Energy Monitor, China has 402 new coal-fired power plants under construction. But in the West, we're being told we aren't allowed to have them. Yep. Minnesota woman sues dentist after four root canals, eight crowns, and 20 fillings done in a single visit. I couldn't even imagine. Hold on a second. That's actually more dental work than she has teeth. I think we should have started suing before she showed up. Begin to imagine what the bill would have been. How much longer is on the memes? Why do they want? Uh, we got about another eight minutes, I think. Okay. Want to get rid of cash? Unfortunately, it's coming. And probably sooner than most of us think. Electric vehicle owners should only be allowed to charge their cars using wind and solar power. Otherwise, it's just pretend. I'm Acorn, and I approve this message. Not even eight minutes. So, you gotta go? No, I just wanted to move to the Unsolved Mysteries. Okay, so the Unsolved Mysteries bit... I'm not a huge fan of this particular, uh, oh, wait, no, we got something before that. Oh, yeah, the body cam yeah. or something, right? Yeah. They single-handedly wrote him enough tickets so, that they made him. What we've got here is this is a source from Lackluster, and he's got a, a well, this, this cop is basically saying the quiet part out loud the whole time. It's beautiful I'm a habitual offender <laughs> <laughs> oh we're just coming from the hospital how am i supposed to get back and forth not my problem that really is not my problem <laughs> not my problem well, i've oh. fingers out the window you know oh yeah. my oh yeah no he's fixing it likes light luster's fixing to do an explanation of what's going on here and it's a really good one Oh, he is the biggest prick I think I've dealt with. Welcome back to the Lackluster Channel. In late November of 2022, Deputy Bean of the Klamath County Sheriff's Department pulled over a man named Jason, who was returning home from driving to the hospital after his father suffered a stroke. This would also be the day that Jason learned that his father had terminal brain cancer. Hello there. Oh yeah, and here, here, here's the actual reason why I don't share uh, admin with my back end on StreamYard. When you share admin, you become one channel. So anytime you enter my StreamYard, you would come in as admin, which makes you me. And so you wouldn't be able to share the two sources on your channels because you're not your channel, you're me at the time that you come in and operate as admin. No, that's a false yep. statement. That is the way it works for Captain Curmudgeon. I can only share to one source because he only has three to share to, and I can't use my additional channels as a guest because I'm admin. I don't know. I think if you can figure out a way I can share to my three destinations using my 
stream yard and his stream yard. He gets his three and I get my three. I would love to hear it. Yeah, That's been a hold yeah, up for a minute. That. I don't know nothing about that, but I don't have three. <laughs> okay, I get what you're saying. But I mean, we would ha we have more shared here than we would if we were operating as a single channel. But we don't have to operate. You can do me as a co thingy. To I'll just do you. We'll call it good. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? Welcome in, Crystal. Hi, Crystal Phoenix. Getting back from the hospital. Crystal. Great. Crystal. You're not Phoenix supposed to be driving. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be driving. What? Yeah, I don't know. You have your ID? What? Do you have your ID? Yeah, why? Need to look at it. What? What? Because you're in violation of, of drive while suspended. Deputy Bean initiated the stop because he was keenly aware that Jason's <laughs> license was suspended. <laughs> However, under Oregon Revised Statute 811.180, emergency situations are listed as an affirmative defense if the circumstances made it necessary for the defendant to drive a motor vehicle at the time and place in question. But Deputy Bean has no way of knowing whether Jason was in fact driving home from the hospital or if he was simply using it as an excuse. And without bothering to conduct any sort of investigation into the matter, Deputy Bean wrote a citation. But the citation is not the point of contention regarding this stop. ID and stuff. No drive. The main controversy is what happens immediately after Deputy Bean leaves the incident. First, as he departs the parking lot, he quietly laughs to himself. <laughs> he then appears to drive about a mile down the road to arrive at the original location he was traveling to, during which the deputy forgets to deactivate his body cam and records talking to himself during his drive. While on the taxpayer's dime, the deputy arrives at the home of his good friend and former colleague, retired Oregon State Police Officer Sergeant Mark Crisp, to hang out, drink coffee, and talk some shit. Come on in! Hey! Oh, I was on the way. I was just coming. I just was down here. No, like, I, I wonder I, how oh. they even... Like, how he even thought to get the body cam footage. He probably just foiled it right out the box and all of it showed up instead right, of just, didn't just, go over. <laughs> right, right. Um, and if they had redacted this part, there would be a question of when it got turned off because it makes that beep when you turn it off. And if, right. and if, which I'm, I'm not going to give them any ideas. A good editor would have made put the beep in there and send it in. But anyway, I turned around. Here comes Jason Roar. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's too good to be true. I better greet him one more time. Oh, God, he's such a he's such a prick. He's a boy. Oh, God, he's a prick. He is the biggest prick I think I've dealt with all the time dealing with. He is such a dickhead. <laughs> Yeah, I was leaving in both fingers out the window, you know. Fuck you, baby. I'm gonna tow your ass. Oh, jeez. He's such a dick. But you know what? He goes down, pays whatever. He goes down, probably pays a thousand bucks every time I give him a ticket. Because he's he's uh, because I single handedly wrote him enough tickets that they made him a habitual offender. <laughs> So he actually has to show up every time I write him a ticket now. Because he used to just like, he'd be like, look, I don't care, Pete. He'd just throw it out the window or just throw it in the car. He's like, I don't care. And I just tag him, tag him, tag him, tag him. I, I don't know how much it's like if you get him like six times in six months for A violations, then they're, then they're revoked. Habitual <laughs> offender. And so I was like, 
I don't care. I'll tag you tomorrow. So I, I tuned him up. Oh, he is. Note that Deputy Bean's statements inferring that he targeted Jason appears to check out. The court records show that Jason has been cited on more than 20 occasions. He has no criminal history such as DUI, theft, or any other criminal activity. All of his appearances are traffic-related offenses, which are alleged to have cost Jason over $80,000 in total. Bean continues to make appalling statements about Jason's father and other members of the community. So he was telling me old Red had a uh, stroke. Oh, really? It can have to a nice again. <laughs> I don't know what everybody's going to do with their dope now. <laughs> Yeah, all red. That's evil. <clears throat> yes. That is actual bona fide evil, not just, I mean. Oh, so God. can I do a plug for a channel real quick? Like, would that bother you? Oh, well, <laughs> you need to do that. Anyway, so guys, uh, Crystal, who's in the chat right now as we speak, she's a new channel, growing channel. Her channel is Mental Health. It's a mental health platform where they share stories of overcoming strife and rising from the ashes through music lives and collaboration, being a voice for the silence. Um, go check out her channel. Uh, let her know AJOT sent you. And she just came out with a book. Um, you can go over on her page and check it out. So she just wrote a book and it just came out. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Cool. I love that kind of stuff around here. I don't care what your family says about you. Go ahead. Yeah, apparently they, that's what they said. Oh, we're just coming from the hospital. How am I supposed to get back and forth? Not my problem. <laughs> that really is not my problem. <laughs> Problem, God. Somebody share her link over in my chat. One of you lovely, most fantastic in people in here, out of it. the seventy that is currently watching me. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, he's got some new tattoos. He's got a. It must be a different gang or something he's in, but he's got like a, uh, like the German red red insignia on his hand now oh, and tats all over this hand like like from but they're like they look like 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 prison tattoos they're really poor quality well, somebody around here is probably mm -hmm. yeah okay. well, well what's your name <laughs> with a dirty needle meadows dana meadows does tattoos does she yeah and they're they're prison quality. <laughs> i've seen a couple of them. <laughs> right Oh my goodness, right. Ah, uh, it's funny. Thank you. I was working on my old truck trying to get it. Oh, were you? Trying to get the fucker out of the garage. Oh. I put the new one in there. And then the fucking Camaro broke down. Broke? How'd that happen? Uh, it's not broke down. It's just not running. Tire. It has flat tire. Um, oh, which I can't get fixed. It's swabbed. I have to take, I have to take the tire off and the car because it, it's a run flat tire, a speed rated run flat. And swabs says we don't fix those <laughs> because that's our policy. And I'm like, well, it's a five hundred dollar tire. It's damn, damn near new. I said I ain't throwing it away. And it's like called Goodyear. And they see, he goes, yeah, we'll fix it one time. Deputy Bean's words are certainly constitutionally protected. The question is whether the conduct is suitable. It certainly appears as though it would be classified as unbecoming for an officer. I personally don't know enough about Jason, his tattoos, or his father to condone their actions or speak for them, but it's imperative that we raise an eyebrow at the behaviors demonstrated in this video. It appears that Deputy Bean was targeting Jason, and the source that sent this video alleges that Deputy Bean's cruiser is at Mark residents frequently, which, if true, would make Deputy Bean's occupation one of the few across the entire world that provides enough free time while on the clock to hang out and do nothing while you 
collect tax dollars. Of course, this is happening as agencies across the country complain that they don't have adequate funds or personnel to staff their departments efficiently. But I'm sure an audit of the Klamath County Sheriff's Office would show that all administrative, service, and maintenance tasks were completed at this time. So I'm curious what you think. Is Deputy Bean's egregious conduct acceptable to you? Does it appear that he values liberty as the coffee mug suggests? Are you satisfied with your tax dollars being spent like this? Let me know in the comment section. And if you like these investigations, check out another episode on screen. And if you have a story, let me be the first to... 16th so we have a choice. Okay. This video, the sound on it's really low, and the guy has kind of a monotone kind of approach to it, mm -hmm. and I haven't really figured out a way to uh, improve the sound. I was working with it, and I thought I had it figured out, but then when I added somebody else in the stream yard, the, the, the auto leveler just reset it back to being really stupid low. Mm -hmm. So tell me if you can hear this at all. El Dorado has evolved from a man to a city to an empire believed to be laden with gold stones. That is maximum blast as far as I can tell. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good. I can. I don't know about chat. I've got it jacked. I got everything I can jack up jacked out the gourd. This is the best I can do you for. So... We're going to start with the story of El Dorado, apparently. This is all kinds of mysteries. It's a, uh, where's it at? Um, yeah, chat hours? said it sounded good, so. Okay. Good, good. This is a four-hour mystery tier list, and oh, I've been yeah. doing about 20 minutes of it every one of these shows. Mm -hmm. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what this is, it was just like, you know, all the descriptions and links and everything's in the description. Yes. The term El Dorado translates to the golden one in Spanish, initially referring to the leader of the Muisca people, an indigenous group in the highlands of modern day Colombia. According to accounts, the Muisca chief would cover himself in gold dust during religious ceremonies and then dive into Lake Guadavita washing off the gold in the waters this ritual aimed at appeasing a god caught the spanish conquistador's attention fueling rumors of a city of immense wealth somewhere in the uncharted territories of south america as the story of el dorado spread it ignited a frenzied search among explorers the legend morphed over time with el dorado no longer representing a person but a city or a kingdom believed to be overflowing with gold. This quest for El Dorado led numerous expeditions into the heart of the continent, with explorers traversing through dense jungles, vast rivers, and treacherous mountains, facing numerous hardships, including hostile encounters with indigenous peoples, diseases, and often death. Among the most famous searchers for El Dorado was Sir Walter Raleigh, the English explorer who undertook two expeditions in the late 16th and early 17th centuries to find the city. Raleigh's expeditions, like many others, ended in failure. All right, let's but take a swing at this. Um, what do you think about the whole El Dorado, uh, the existence of something that could be construed as a mysterious unknown city that may or may not have had gold involved with it? I guess we lost her. ...of the journey fueled further interest in El Dorado and the riches it promised. Another famous search was undertaken by Gonzalo Pizarro, the younger sibling of Francisco Pizarro. Also, quick aside, if your brother conquered a literal empire of gold in the form of the Incans, that's got to make your quest for the jungle equivalent seem more rational. Despite numerous expeditions and the advancements in geographical knowledge of South America, El Dorado remained elusive, with no concrete evidence of its existence ever found. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to take a moment and share this stream to a random Facebook post anywhere in the world that you want to on anybody's random. page. 
kind of how you want random. Random or the better. <laughs> Let's get some weirdos in here. <laughs> the legend persisted into the 18th century, but as time passed and no tangible proof emerged, the search for El Dorado waned, and the legend gradually transitioned from a potential reality to a myth. Interestingly, though, You're already up in recent on, uh, years, the new techniques cards, have been able to uncover oh. structures of ancient civilizations no, in the Amazon, muted, muted. suggesting that perhaps El Dorado may have some more truth to it than one would think. I wouldn't be surprised if new findings out of the Amazon inspire, at the very least, a television show where explorers go on a modern El Dorado hunt with modern equipment and techniques. Also, if you grew up at any point during the last two decades or so, you know that the real treasure of this legend is Chell, the Hanjo Masamuni. <laughs> the Hanjo Masamuni represents not just a priceless piece of Japanese cultural heritage, but also one of the most intriguing mysteries of occupation era Japan. Crafted by the legendary swordsmith Masamune in the late 13th or early 14th century, this sword is considered a masterpiece among Japanese swords, or Nahanto. Masamune's works are celebrated for their beauty, you, quality, and the superior craftsmanship that marks them as unparalleled artifacts. And yes, if you've ever played a JRPG or watched an anime, you've probably heard this name ascribed to a sword in whatever game or anime that was. The Hanjo Masamune, named after a general who once owned it, carries not only the legacy of its creator, but also the history of Japan itself, making its disappearance a significant loss to both cultural heritage and historical scholarship. The tale of the Hanjo Masamune mirrors the tumultuous periods of Japanese history having been passed down through generations of warriors, samurai, and collectors. The sword's last known owner before its disappearance was Tokugawa Yamasa, the hereditary head of the Tokugawa family, who governed Japan during the Edo period. Yamasa surrendered it to a police station in Majiro, Tokyo, in December 1945, following the Allied directive to confiscate all weapons in Japan after World War II including Nihonto. The Allied forces collected thousands of swords, many of historical and cultural significance, as part of the disarmament process. The Hanjo Masamune, along with other surrendered swords, was presumably intended for destruction or repurposing, a fate that presumably befell countless historical artifacts in the aftermath of the war. However, the exact sequence of events following its surrender is where the trail goes cold. The Japanese police claim they handed the sword over to Sergeant Coldy Bymore, but from there, its whereabouts become a matter of speculation and mystery, as the U.S. occupation forces didn't receive it. Also, yes, you heard me correct, the American serviceman was allegedly named Coldy Bymore. Unsurprisingly, Someone by that name has never been discovered. I would hypothesize that the false name given may have been something more legitimately American. Perhaps Cody Biltmore. The disappearance of the Hanjo Masamune has sparked numerous theories and leads over the decades. Some suggest it may have been taken to the United States, either as a war trophy or in an official capacity, only to be lost, sold, or hidden away. I bet you it's sitting over Others there right next it to the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant, that big ass fucking Unrecognized or kept secret by a right. private collector. Efforts to locate the Hanjo Masamune have been complicated by a few factors. The chaotic post war. You're muted. Anyone who's looked into the uh, history of this particular blade. We'll find out that at the time that it was that it was turned over, it was turned over to a very sketchy character with multiple descriptions, almost as if it was several different people. But it's kind of a weird tale. Beyond that, at the time, in order to try to keep some of these historic weapons and families, they were disassembled and reassembled into lesser versions of 
themselves. So they would go and get like the hammer handle pommel of, of a different sword maker and mount it onto the blade and then just hope it passes, you know, an inspection and whatnot. I'm pretty sure something like this took place with this weapon and that it's still in Japan. Right? Someone right. out there has it sitting over their their mantelpiece and has no idea that they are holding the Mass Mune because it has a, a Shiri Jiru uh a pommel and guard. A, a much less um renowned maker. So the yeah. same thing. Oh, it's storming outside, dang. Oh, good girl. We like rain in Texas. <laughs> Period. Saw the displacement and destruction of many Moist. records, making Moist it difficult to track the movement of surrendered items. Also, you also the try my email, cultural value and the prestige That's associated with Masamoon's work. That's at Caucasian Sasquatch at Gmail, right? Right. That's really you remember Caucasian one word, Caucasian Sasquatch, no caps, not special, <laughs> nothing. Or, or if you get just get drunk and want to send out some really weird pictures, <laughs> stop. Mean that the sword would be, to put it mildly, of extreme value, meaning a collector is unlikely to simply volunteer it. Personally, I imagine that this sword is sitting on a mantelpiece in Bismarck, North Dakota. Its present owners completely unaware that they possess one of the rarest and most sought-after swords ever crafted. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. This is a good one. Did Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid die when the story says they died? Or did they go down to Bolivia and, and, and start their ranch? Oh, for sure. You think he went to Bolivia and started his yeah. ranch? Mm-hmm. I really want to believe that. That is that is what I choose to believe. I don't believe it, but that's what I choose to believe. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid are names that resonate through American history, pop culture, and Old West folklore. Butch Cassidy, born Robert Leroy Parker in 1866 in Beaver, Utah, grew up in a large Mormon family. Influenced by the rugged surroundings and the tales of outlaws, he embarked on a life of crime, starting with minor thefts and eventually escalating to bank and train robberies. His charisma, intelligence, and aversion to violence, preferring to use wit and strategy over brute force, distinguished him from other outlaws of his time and helped his image as a gentlemanly bandit. The Sundance Kid, whose real name was Harry Alonzo Longabaugh, was born in 1867 in Montclair, Pennsylvania. He earned his nickname after serving time for horse theft in Sundance, Wyoming. Known for his sharpshooting skills, Longabaugh crossed paths with Cassidy, and the two, along with a rotating group of troublemakers known as the Wild Bunch, embarked on a series of high-profile robberies across the United States. The Wild Bunch was notorious for their audacious heists, which included robbing banks, trains, and paying off law enforcement to turn a blind eye to their escapades. They were pioneers in the use of dynamite for safe cracking and became famed for their Robin Hood image, often sharing their loot with the poor. This, combined with their efforts to avoid violence, helped cultivate a somewhat romantic image of the gang among the public. Despite their efforts to remain nonviolent, the gang was constantly pursued by lawmen and the Pinkerton Detective Agency. The relentless pursuit forced Cassidy and the Sundance Kid to seek refuge outside the United States. In 1901, they, along with Sundance's companion, at a place, fled to Argentina, where they attempted Argentina, to live under right. assumed names and started being ranchers. However, the lure of easy money proved too strong to resist, and they soon reverted to their old ways, robbing banks and trains in South America. You want to try that one? Neos? Neos RKH. What's up, bud? Welcome to the show. Good to see you. Appreciate you coming by. So does AJ. She's here somewhere. I'm here. <laughs> Erica. Their activities eventually drew the attention of local authorities. And in 1908, 
It is widely believed that Cassidy and the Sundance Kid met their end in Bolivia. According to the most accepted account, after robbing a payroll delivery courier, they were surrounded by soldiers in the small town of San Vicente. Refusing to be captured, the pair allegedly engaged in a shootout during which they were fatally wounded. However, there is no conclusive evidence they met their end in Bolivia, and both men are claimed to have been sighted back in the United States. I'm going to hazard to guess that it may not have been any great feat for wealthy, charismatic bandits to grease a few palms and have themselves declared dead in early 20th century Bolivia. The Disappearance of Etta Place The Disappearance of Etta Place, the Sundance Kid's longtime partner, remains shrouded in mystery and speculation. Etta Place's origins are as mysterious as her disappearance. Historical records provide little evidence of her early life, including her real name, which remains a subject of debate. It is believed that Etta Place was an alias. She has been variously identified. Illegal or like from fucking outer space? I don't know. Wait, no, alias. He said alias. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> historical documents but none conclusively reveal her true identity. She emerged into the public eye in the late 1890s, primarily through her association with Harry Longabaugh. All right, so this this is accurate. Leave, leave dynamite alone. If you, if you ever end up in a mine or anything, or you just find a busket or anything, anything like that, if you find old dynamite, just leave the fuck alone. Um, <laughs> we had a crazy old guy that lived out where I grew up and every 4th of July, he would go dig up some dynamite. He knew where it was. And, uh, he died, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago and his daughter inherited the land. And there's probably two dozen old, um, like campers and stuff out there that nobody will touch because we know for a fact, there's still at least a quarter case of dynamite on that property somewhere. Mm -hmm. But, and and every couple of years, there's a big search goes out there to try to find it with dogs and stuff. And um, no nobody knows where it was kept. And nobody's got the balls to go out there with like a freaking bush hog and cut the grass or a chainsaw and start mucking around any of those campers because, you know, old dynamite and whatnot. It should be stable nowadays, but we don't know where the dynamite came from in the first place. So... And he was one of those nutty country geniuses you come across. Mm -hmm. it was a full class tech for the U.S. military and whatnot. And so it was perfectly legal for him to be mucking around with stuff like that. But he was nuts. The Sundance Kid. Described as strikingly beautiful, intelligent, and well-mannered, Etta was unlike the typical female companions of outlaws of the time. She was reportedly well-educated and possessed horse riding and shooting skills that allowed her to move comfortably within the outlaw circles and the rugged terrains they frequented. The most well-documented period of Etta's life was her time in South America with Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Etta's presence in South America is well-documented through photographs and various historical accounts which depict her as an integral part of the trio's life on the run. In 1909, after the Sundance Kid's supposed death, she vanished from historical records, leaving behind a trail of speculation and unanswered questions. There are several theories about Etta's disappearance. One theory suggests that she grew weary of the outlaw lifestyle to return to the United States. Another posits that she remained in South America, possibly after Sundance and Cassidy were allegedly killed in Bolivia, and either married or lived out her days in anonymity. A third theory suggests that she met an untimely death, either through illness or at the hands of enemies. You hear that thunder? There's no concrete evidence to support this claim. Unlike Cassidy and Sundance, whose deaths, while still hotly debated, oh are documented through contemporary accounts and believed by many to have occurred in Bolivia, Etta left no such trail. There are numerous candidates for her actual identity. However, 
None of them seem to match up in any meaningful way. The Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine The Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine is a legendary treasure said to be hidden in the Superstition Mountains of Arizona. Despite numerous expeditions, the mine remains an enduring mystery. The story centers on Jacob Waltz, a German immigrant often referred to as the Dutchman. Waltz reportedly discovered a rich gold mine in the Superstition Mountains in the late 1800s, but took the secret of its location to his grave in 1891. Unlike many such legendary tales, Jacob Waltz was a historical person who immigrated to the United States in 1848, presumably in the wake of the ongoing revolutions in Europe. There is evidence to suggest that Jacob Waltz did have a large quantity of gold, though whether his wealth was derived from this supposed gold mine is ultimately unknown. Before his death, Waltz is said to have shared cryptic clues about the mine's whereabouts with a few acquaintances, setting the stage for a mystery that has captivated the imagination of many. The legend of the lost Dutchman's mine is not just a tale of hidden treasure. It's interwoven with the history and folklore of the American Southwest. The Superstition Mountains themselves are named for the Native American beliefs that held the area to be sacred and cursed, adding a layer of supernatural intrigue to the story of the mine. Over the years, the legend has been embellished with tales of Apache guardians, Spanish conquistadors, and cursed gold, making the distinction between fact and fiction increasingly them. blurred. Some accounts suggest that it's less a gold mine and more of a mountain storage area used by conquistadors to hide plundered gold. Many have tried to locate the lost Dutchman's mine using Waltz's supposed clues and maps that have surfaced over the years. These maps, often contradictory and confusing, have led countless treasure hunters into the Superstition Mountains. The area's treacherous terrain, with its steep cliffs and extreme temperatures, have claimed the lives of several individuals, fueling rumors that the mine is cursed. The terrain has claimed numerous searchers, with the latest unfortunate losses coming in 2010. My theory on this one is that Jacob Waltz may have simply enjoyed telling tall tales about a gold mine, and given that he was independently wealthy, this story developed into the present tale, which is more legend than fact. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Since it's an uh, age out show, we're going to let her talk us out tonight, so good luck. <laughs> Well, thank you, gentlemen and ladies, for coming to support the Caucasian Ajot Bad Binky Show. Come back again next Tuesday. Toodles. Toodles. Ain't working. Uh, I was like, <laughs> ain't working. I'm on the cheek, huh? He fucked up just by thinking I was sweet, huh? I run the city, might have thought I was some cleats, huh? You never heard someone like this upon the beat, huh? Tootie fruity, the booty duty is jury duty. Moody foodies, jacuzzis is filled with bougie booties. All of this money don't know how to count it, man. I think I need a computer. I can't live in deep, man. I live at the funeral. I got the need for a shooter. Yeah. I'm getting bigger, getting bigger, huh? Yeah. Do you want to reconsider, huh? Yeah. Lost control of a killer, huh? Yeah. I'm getting bigger, getting bigger, huh? Old label drug dealers, huh? Dealers, huh? If you build it, homie, they will come. They will come. If you're turning up, to save me some. Save me some. Drive down to get to ego, huh? I don't care for boring people. I think you're the lame. I only politic with goons while out the frame. Yeah. Better take another shot, bitch. It's not a game. I'll beat it out the frame. Baraka, waka, flock of flame. Uh, I am a legend, man. You know that I have a problem with acting a fool. I don't talk to police. I know nothing. I swear to God that that shit is not true. I'm a barbarian hopping and joining and looking for something to do. I'm remarkable. I'm on a roll. If you need education, I'll take you to school. Yeah. I'm getting bigger, getting bigger, huh? Yeah. Do you want to reconsider, huh? Yeah. Lost control of a killer, huh? Yeah. I'm 
getting bigger, getting bigger. Wake up, brush off, get clean, look good. Put on two chains, flexing, but what's up? So fly, to see me, you look up. I win, you lose, fuck you, but what's up? I don't care for boring people. I think you're lame. I only call a chick with goons while out the frame. Yeah. Better take another shot, bitch. It's not a game. I'll beat it out the frame. Baraka, waka, flock of flame. Yeah. I'm the shit, I'm the shit, I'm the shit, I'm the shit. Now I think I will go catch a body. Yeah. Fuck your bitch, fuck your bitch, fuck your bitch, fuck your bitch. And then I will go take a party. No teriyaki, yeah, rock, kawasaki. If you're gonna suck dick, she can hop in the shot. She popping the molly, we'll cop in the squatty. Oh, cookie, loving the body. Yeah. I'm getting bigger, getting bigger. Getting bigger, getting bigger. Sing this. One time. Two time. Three time. Hey.